Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is G. Cole, and welcome to Homegrown, where I get to share with you some good music while talking to some great people. Hello, world. Hope you're feeling as good as I am. I want to big up all my homegrown listeners out there and welcome all the new listeners. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so we can keep you updated when new material is available. We will be posting new episodes bi-weekly. I want to thank everyone who has been listening and sharing. Please leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Please check out the website also, homegrownwithgcole.com, for all things homegrown. This is episode 20. I want to talk about one of our sponsors real quick, Cruise and Travel Professionals. My vacation is very important to me. I go to work, I pay bills, I take vacations. It's in the budget, just like the mortgage and insurance. I worked in the cruise industry for over 13 years doing sales and customer service for three of the major cruise lines. When I left the industry, I booked my own, be it online or calling up myself, but no more. Not since I discovered Cruise and Travel Professionals. They do all cruises and land packages, even European river cruises. They save me time, but more than that, they save me money. They bring over 30 years experience in the cruise industry and the travel industry overall. Call them up. Ask for Ingrid Daniels. They are the experts in travel. 954-376-0568. 954-376-0568. Ask for Ingrid Daniels. Tell her G. Cole sent you. 954-376-0568. Kind of hard to keep around these days It's like a war, forget out of this week's state yeah. Feel like me losing it every day True mugga hesitate, we telling you please wait It looking like me need space So I get up and go separate What we made, no some other things that take your place okay. Every day is a quick fix Thinking that you're gone by your business When me alone, go my separate way And set this pace Reckless rage, I know my dwelling head yeah. But often sing about all these things for elevate But elevate. it's hard for sing, clasp your wings, make a pray When you're living in a place where the devil play When you're living in a place Place where the good hardly resonates Funny how vivid pictures are hell around us Make your call up and hard to see heaven gates I need you here to make things more clear Some things I don't see And I'm trying to believe I'm trying to believe Keep I need to know you better We need to roll together in this place And beat the stormy weather Cause we will not surrender We will not surrender Certain things I can't see Certain things I can't feel but feel it within You're the certain things I can't grip Something you don't really know the meaning of can mean everything Can you see fate? Do you believe it? Can you stretch out your hand and go feel it? Do you believe you'll achieve what your dream chase? You never know but my keep it Tell us that my need fit I need you Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Good evening again. Uh, this is G. Cole. Um, today, today's topic is talking to teenagers. Um, came up with a topic for this 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 episode primarily because um, you know the, the topic of teenagers and what they're going through and you know how they how they react, how they adjust, how they operate. You know, it's 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 been there since the, the beginning of time. I had that. You know, I'm sure my parents thought of it the same way when I was a teenager. I have a teenage child myself. 
um, and so forth. So there's that. There, there's what's deemed misunderstanding. As I speak to the teenagers, we're wondering, you know, they feel misunderstood, misheard. And uh, funny thing is, oftentimes, as you talk to them, if they're honest, they'll realize that sometimes they also don't listen. They also are not really trying to understand. You know, so there's a standoff as to, you know, are, 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 are we allowing them to be them? Um, as well as with them, are they allowing us to help guide them? You know, so we're going to be talking to a, a group of bright, intelligent, um, and honest teenagers this this evening. Uh, but prior to doing that, I wanted to touch base with an educator, somebody who interacts with them on a different basis, on a daily basis. Um, because, of course, you know, at home, you get everything. You get the barriers, you get the walls, you get... Um, the, the the residual of what transpired during the course of that day, um, you know, being brought home. And that's what we deal with. So what I want to do is talk to somebody who is there with them during the course of the day, dealing with them on a daily basis um, prior to me getting them on the line. So I'm going to talk to Ms. Sue Johnson, um, who's a Palm Beach educator. And um, we'll, we'll, you know, try to get some insight from the other end of the, of, 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 of the, the, the coin. So let me go ahead and get her on the line, see what we can get done. All right, Ms. Johnson, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Well, first of all, thank you so much for taking your time to, you know, educate myself and, and the homegrown listeners here. Um, like I was telling everybody before, the primary purpose of my trying to bring you on board is we oftentimes talk, to, talk about the teenagers and, you know, they're, 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 how they operate and stuff like that. And we decide, okay, sometimes we got to do something on their behalf. We've got to try to help them out. But oftentimes we do not do what's necessary, which is to talk to them. We put a bunch of adults in a room and they try right. to come up with things that are supposed to help and benefit the teenagers when we, what we should do is probably bring them on board. Right. So what I wanted to chat with you about being that you are, because because as parents, we interact with them when they get home from there. It's kind of mm-hmm. like from their day of work. Mm-hmm. You know, and they go through what they go through, they deal with what they deal with, and then they come home and they pretty much just unload or sometimes they don't. They come home and shut down. Right. So while you're there each day dealing with them, what I wanted to find out from you pretty much is um, what are some of the things that our teenagers are dealing with uh, at school on a daily basis that's actually coming home, um, that they're bringing home with them, and that's creating what we deem some of that, you know, friction between teenagers and their parents? Well, um, one of the things I could say is, unfortunately, as a parent, you would hope that they're only focused on school, but we need to understand that um, school comprises of a lot of different uh, things jumbled up together. So you have to deal with the teacher demands, you have to deal with work demands, but usually for teenagers, that's not depending on the focus of that team, it's not the primary concern for that student because they're also um, trying to fit in with their peers Mm -hmm. and they are trying to um, be uh, individuals and originals at the same time. You can't really do that without doing what everyone else around you is doing. So, we think about like the trend when kids say bruh all the time, which drives us crazy, just so you know. <laughs> but when we think about that, um, it'll start with one kid in the classroom, and then somebody else will hear it. Some kids will laugh, so they'll say, okay, so this is what I can do to fit in. So now I'm going to start saying bruh. It doesn't right. matter if the child was raised to have respect for their, for their adults, and they understand that they can't, you know, interrupt while teachers talking and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Because when they leave that classroom they have to deal with their peers. Right. So if you're just sitting there and you're following the rules and you're, and you're doing what the teacher asks and you're raising your hand and you're participating in class, yeah, you'll get good grades. And you'll do the right, you know, you'll be smiled upon by the teachers. You'll be smiled upon by the um, administrators and by your parents. But then I'm thrown into basically into the wild, you know, right. um, when they're walking into the hallways, they're kind of like just out on their own. So right. they have to figure out how to survive, not only making their parents happy and um, dealing with the responsibilities of school work, but they have to survive with their peers. And that's usually the focus of a, a high schooler. And they're not going to tell you that right away because they, they think that they're being individuals, 
But a lot of times, if you really pay attention to them and just sit back and watch them, you'll see that that's what they're doing. I got gotcha. you. If that makes any sense. It does. It does. I guess this peer pressure thing is real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they won't, they won't say it's peer pressure <laughs> mm-hmm. because, like I said, they think that they are doing what they want to do, not realizing that they are doing what everyone else around them is doing. They think they're doing it because this is what they want to do. I got you. I got you. So it's way more psychological than we'd like to think. Uh, absolutely. It's like psychological warfare. Wow. And if we think back in a time where we were in school, um, one of the things I always tell my students is we, you guys have it harder than we do because we were lucky. Let's say I was being bullied in school. I would go home and hopefully, you know, you have this loving, supportive family and everybody understands and you are, you are able to escape the world that outside of your home. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, they're not able to do that. Social so media, when huh? it looks like, mm-hmm, when it looks like to us, they're just, all you do is care about your phone. All you do, you're always on your phone. But really, that's like their way of connecting with the world. Right, right. So when they're sitting together in groups, everybody's on their phone. Kind of, We do the same thing for the most part. True. But um, that's their way of connecting, and they never get to disconnect when you look at it. So bullying is a lot um, more prevalent now, and peer pressure is a lot more prevalent now because you have to see it everywhere you turn. Right. I have my phone and my tablet attached to me, so I'm constantly seeing that this is what I need to do to fit in. Wow. I'm constantly seeing that these things are reinforced outside of my home and my parents don't understand me because they didn't have to go through it. And they just don't understand, you know, what a teenager goes through. So they look more to their peers um, to give them that, that grounding for what they need to be doing. Wow. Well, I mean, and, and I try as with my daughter and with, with my, you know, my God kids and just the kids that I'm around to be open and be honest uh, you know, as they would say, be real, because the truth is, mm-hmm. we've been like I was talking to some, talk to talking to one of them on the way here to the studio, and I was saying pretty much, um, it's almost like when you know after the election and everything, when they were trying to put together okay a group that's going to go ahead and make the decisions on on women's rights and 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 what you know what I mean, and yeah. in that room was all men. <laughs> No so it's a scenario, okay. no women. So you got a bunch of men right. in there that's going to go in there and make a decision and try to come up with what women are, you know, what, what, what they can and cannot do, what choices they, they can make and cannot make, which is dumb as hell. hell. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then it kind of, you know, we have to look at it from the same way of the teenagers. I've told them I was a teenager before. Right. So I, 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 I've dealt with some of those things. However, the, while I was a teenager, the world was a different place. Completely different. You know, I could separate, you know, I could go home and shut it off. Right. They don't. And, and, and I try also to be honest, too, because I am attached, be it for social reasons or be it for work, I am also mm-hmm. attached to my devices. Um, you know, so oftentimes I, I, I try to not tell my kid, just put it away and put it down. I try to say, okay, let's put it down so we can spend a little time together. Because truth be told, while she's over there on hers... I might be over here on mine for totally different reasons right. and a lot of times for right. the same reasons, you know. But, you know, as, because we didn't have that uh, attached to us all the time as kids or teens, we were able to develop reasoning skills mm-hmm. that were outside of, you know, right and wrong because we didn't get to see everybody make a bad choice. These right. kids are seeing everybody make bad choices so often that these bad choices look like hey, well, you know, it can't, it's not that bad if 50 million people like this this video. It can't be that bad, so maybe I'll try and do that. It's been normalized. You know what I mean? Exactly. They're normalizing things before they have the ability to do to reason properly. Right. If that right. makes any sense. It, it, a lot it, of it time, absolutely does. Mm-hmm. We, I was going to say a lot of times we get our uh, morals from our parents. And t- like I said, typically I'm, I'm talking about when we have an average home, be it single mom, single dad, mom, dad together, mom, mom, dad, dad, whatever that is, as long as it's a loving environment, mm-hmm. those children typically get their morals from their parents who are usually, you know, they may have some struggles here or there, but they're, they're teaching their child to love and care and be respectful. Right. With that being said, 
those children are also seeing things in the media that doesn't always look like what um, my parents are trying to instill in me. Right. So sometimes you have to use um, what they're using as teaching teachable moments. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I mean, for me, a lot of times it takes some processing because um, when mm-hmm. I was a kid growing up, you know, I, I did stuff. Just keep it real. Mm-hmm. I did stuff. But yep. I, with me, it's a scenario where if I got in trouble or if I did something wrong, I, you know, I did it. Wanted to, chose to. Never once did I do something because of peer pressure. Never once right. did I do something because I wanted to impress somebody. What mm-hmm. I, I, I always wanted, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how come all of, through these years, you know, the peers have been so empowered. But at the same time, it has always been there. Right. Because yeah. you always had people who were, you know, subject to that, who were victims of the whole peer pressure thing. So it's not, it's, it's not new, but it seems no. to me right now that the peers are so empowered that the individual, you know, as an individual, if you say, okay, that's not for me, you know, it seems to be so much of a stretch or so much of a step for them to take for one person to say, you know what, nah, I'm not going to do that. Right. And you have to really, really be a strong-minded person in order to to turn your head and say, you know what, I'm not going to do that. And some things, kids know, you know, this isn't, this isn't right. Some things are just like inherently, you feel that in your, in your gut, you feel it in your heart that this just isn't right. Those types of things, you're always going to have kids like that that can just say, heck no, this is not for me. Mm-hmm. But it's the ones that uh, can be swayed that you have to worry about. And unfortunately, um, since the beginning of time, there's always been strong-minded individuals. You may have been a strong-minded individual, and we still have kids like that right now that are just strong-minded, strong-willed, and they're not going to be swayed. Mm-hmm. But I feel that the more that we have access, this is the age of information, right. the more we have access to things, um, I think it's, it's a little bit more difficult for somebody that can be swayed a certain way to have that, that strong sense of, okay, this is what I'm going to do because this is what I think is right. Because you may see somebody else doing something completely opposite and they're telling you that it's right too. Right, right. So now you're in the middle of, okay, you know, I got to make my own decisions. Hmm. I got to, I have to figure this out on my own and not just that, but I'm also going to do as teenagers, like I said, I'm also going to do what little Johnny's over here doing because Johnny is my homie and I want to fit in with my home. Right, right, right. So, I mean, with that being said, though, I mean, how much, mm -hmm. with the effort that we're putting at home as parents, it almost sounds negated and null and void. Like, okay, you know what, I'm putting all this effort in at home, but once he walks or she walks out that door, then I, I, you know, all of what I've done pretty much is null and void. Um, How much of that is, is, is true versus people really need to do a lot more at home and are not doing a lot more at home. I mean, you know, you try to accomplish all these goals, you the, the house to provide for them, the vacation, make sure everybody's got everything that they need. However, mm-hmm. a lot of times the, the the sacrifice is the time at home in order to accomplish a lot of that. I remember the analogy used that, you know, there was always a big mama, so to speak, mm-hmm. back in the day, you know, or when mom, when you, when mom and dad came home or maybe even just mom came home, the attention was given to you. But we also live in the age right now that when people come home, they're not necessarily off of work. They're taking some of that work home and the attention right. and this and that. How much of that plays a part into what's going on with these teenagers too? Well, I think that plays a huge part because the more um, an individual is left to their own devices, literally their own devices, mm-hmm. um, they're able, you know, if, if a parent, if it was like a younger kid, and a parent isn't paying that much attention to them, that child is being raised by something. It may not be being raised by um, the parent, and parents are doing the best that they can. I understand that. Um, but something is raising that child. Right. So it could be um, them watching YouTube channels while they're watching other people watch, play games, and that kind of thing that they're doing nowadays. Mm-hmm. And they hear little things. They're, they're listening to music and they're watching videos. Um, or their parent is sitting watching videos with them and talking about those videos with them right. instead of just leaving them to the device to watch and pay attention. Sometimes it's as simple as being in the same room as the child and not allowing the child to put whatever they're watching or doing on on their headset because you want to be able to hear what they're doing. Right. Even though you're not going to be able to see it, 
you want to be able to hear it because you can at least respond while you're working and they're doing whatever they're doing. You want to at least be able to respond or, or stop and chat with them about whatever it is that's coming up. Right, right, right. I got you. I got you. Now, as far as outside of peer pressure, what's another thing that you commonly are faced with or have to deal with when it comes to teenagers right now at school? Um, I think, honest to goodness, peer pressure is one of the biggest things because everything is under that umbrella. Right. I got so you. So I want to fit in. Um, they're dealing, of course, with sex and sexuality. Mm-hmm. Who am I? Do I like this or do I not like this? Do I like all of these things or do I just like a couple of these things? <laughs> right, right, So trying right. to figure out who they are um, and trying to figure out what they want to be when they grow up because if they are thinking about their future, even though it doesn't seem like it <laughs> right. to us, right. because they may not have the types of plans that we want them to have. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times because of what they see in front of them, they want to get money fast and quickly so they can buy the things that they want and they're not necessarily thinking about um, saving or growing, you know, things that they need. So they're dealing with all of that stuff, but it's all under the umbrella of their peers and right. their influences. I can see that. I can see that from the sex, drugs, bullying and stuff. You're absolutely right all because most times yep. you're doing it because of the, the, the peer pressure from any one of right. those avenues that you look at. So I guess the biggest thing to tackle now is how does um, a parent equip or try to equip mm-hmm. their teenagers to deal with mm-hmm. peer pressure? And I'm saying teenagers. This is going on from elementary school. Um, you know, all the way up. I'm, I'm just saying teenagers because right after that, they're out there in the world. And mm-hmm. um, if these are the fragile people that we're talking about, if they're so fragile here, remember, these are the leaders of tomorrow. Is this the, okay. time, is this the person that's flying my plane that's taking me on vacation? Is this the person that's running the economy? Is this the person that's running my account, my insurance? So we've got to work on all this stuff. And again, not alienating, um, you know, the, 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 the real young ones because a lot of times we have programs here that we'll focus on them. But I just... Thought of the teenagers primarily because their next step is the real world. The real world. And I feel that if we have them under under our wing and we show them as well as teach them, because they are watching you up until, you know, I, don't, I still call my mom for help. I still call my aunt for help. I still call family members to help me through things. So mm-hmm. They are watching every move that you make from the day that they're born not even until the day they leave your house because they're still going to need you as the parent. You just have to be the parent that's there. Right. And sometimes the things that we see them go through or the things that we see on the, in the news, because you got to remember, they're also dealing with um, politics and racism and stuff like that, that in the 80s and 90s, we were not faced mm-hmm. with that stuff growing up. So they're also dealing with those types of things and trying to figure out how to respond and how does this make me feel and is this world really as bad as it looks outside or or is this just because somebody's acting that way but it's not really that bad? So they're still they're dealing with that too. Right. There's right. a lot and they and they haven't gotten the coping skills, the coping mechanisms to handle and process this type of stuff the way that they that that would be beneficial or effective, I should say. Right. So it's just a lot. I just imagine like information overload, you know? Mm-hmm. Negative and information a, overload. Right. <laughs> so as a parent, you got to help them filter through the negative stuff and help them see what the positive things are as well as the, you know, and understanding that negative things happen. It's a part of life and you don't have to be what you see. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You can be better than that. Wow. Well, I'm actually excited to go talk to them. I can actually hear them out there in the, in the, in the lobby uh, mm. doing what they do. So hopefully nothing's broken, um, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll we'll go ahead and iron that out. I want to thank you so much for taking you know time out to chat with me today. Um, I know you know lots of people find it beneficial, and hopefully one of these days we'll have you on for an even longer period of time. Mm-hmm. But you're very so welcome. Much. You're very. If something is broken out there, take it easy on them because they are kids. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't kill them. Just take it easy. Talk to them. Don't kill them. <laughs> That's all right. It's insured. thank you so much Ms. Johnson I appreciate your time you're welcome alright keep it moving keep it grooving it's homegrown 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is G. Cole again. I'm back and this is Homegrown with G. Cole. I finally got the opportunity to get the, uh, the teenagers in the room. Uh, the, the beginning of the conversation was pretty much with Miss uh, Sue Johnson and she's an educator. So we were able to get her perspective on a lot of things. But you know what? Like I mentioned to them before, if we're trying to address things with teenagers, I don't think adults need to be in a room putting it together. So what we're doing is we have the teenagers here. We have from age 17, we have age 16, and we have age 15. All right, so we're just going to go over some stuff. Generally speaking, I'd put together more structured questions and whatnot, but to accommodate, accommodate you guys and make you as comfortable as is possible, we're just going to play it by ear. i got a bunch of microphones in the room, um, but we might have to talk up a little bit, you know, since we're not as close because of the space. Um, ladies over there, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. All right, based on the levels I'm seeing here, we're going to need them to talk a little louder. Uh, guys, how about you guys? Yeah. Wow, the deep. All right, cool now. So let me, let me, let me, let me push you all up a little bit um, on my side of the fence here. How about that? We'll make it work. <laughs> we'll make it work. All right. Primary reason for being here, like I mentioned, is just to make sure that we can address. You guys, it's your world. At the end of the day, we're parents, we're young, but at the end of the day, it's your world. Truth be told, in a couple years from now, every time I board a flight, one of y'all going to be flying the plane. Every time I go on a cruise, one of you guys going to be responsible for the ship. When my taxes need to be done, one of you guys going to keep me out of trouble. So I'm very, very interested in your take on things. But right now, there's a host of things going on in schools and so forth that sometimes we feel like parents don't understand. Now... I have a list of stuff here, but just to see, again, we're at different age ranges. I'm going to start from that side of the room, and I'm going to say, Quay, what do you think are some of the biggest problems that you're experiencing right now in school? You don't have to give me anything broad spectrum, but what do you think are the biggest issue teenagers and students as a whole are experiencing in school right now? Um, preparation for college. Cool. Preparation for college. And you're talking about that from a financial standpoint or just trying to figure out what you want to do? Um, both. Both? All right. Cool, cool, cool. I like that. I like that. Joe, what about you? Um, probably trying to fit in. Okay. Okay. Jay? I think it may be the workload. School workload? Like yeah. school work? Yes. You think it's a lot? Yeah, at times. Okay. What about you? Um, I think like if you play sports, maintaining mm -hmm. your grades and sports at the same time, 
could be a little hard. It's a little hard. Yeah. All right. Here's the reason why I don't question any. And the reason I asked all of you is you all had a different opinion. You all had a different answer. Because the reality of it is this. Everybody's day is different. What I go through on Monday, I don't go through on Tuesday. So I don't expect it to be the same for you just because you're kids. Sometimes adults feel like, okay, you got one responsibility. That's to go to school and get some grades. But they don't think about a lot of the other things. You mentioned sports. It's a distraction. It's something that you're doing and you're doing it for you. And it will help you ultimately, right? But at the same time, it is something else. It's amazing even as adults, we have 24 hours in a day. You're at work for eight of those. You're supposed to sleep for eight of those. And you're supposed to spend the other eight kind of with your family and whatnot. But if you've got two things to do during the day, you don't get an extra eight hours to do it. You've got to figure it out in the same eight hours. And it's the same thing with you. You've got schoolwork to figure out and you've got sports to figure out. Right. The issue is sometimes, you know, you're going to have to figure out is one of them taken away from the other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, it's a scenario where what, what, what's, what's the bother in that? When you come home, you're tired, you're behind on some work or so forth. You may find that your parents aren't understanding that, man, my workload is a little heavy. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then, Javon, going back over to you, you had mentioned about the work. It's pretty much the same thing. But as far as the workload goes, you're not getting any understanding from, from adults that, hey, I've got a lot on my plate in terms of workload. Exactly. So you're, is, is it that schools, is it that you have too many classes, you got too many? What is it when you say workload? I mean, <clears throat> with my school, we have block schedules. So we have four classes on one day and the other four on the other days. But I feel like, the amount of work that we receive is just a bit excessive. Like, I mean, I understand that it helps us in the long run, but so much work isn't needed. And it is stressful at the end of the day because, you know, you have deadlines to meet and all of this, and, you know, it starts stressing you out. You might procrastinate for one thing, and you might not end up completing it on time. It's just a lot that you go through. And I feel like some some adults, grown-ups, don't understand that we right. have a lot to go through as well. I got you. I got you. And I understand completely because you're looking at this. I got deadline to meet. I got this. I got that. Your parents are probably saying, I got a deadline too. It's called a mortgage. Right? It's called your back to school shopping. Right? True. It's called your health insurance. You know what I'm saying? So, but I understand. I understand. Everybody's different. Um, you know, people, we want the best for you. And the truth is, it's not that it's too much to handle. It's too much for you to put the effort into handle because the thing is it may mean you might be have to you might have to be up an extra hour at the night you may have to miss out on something and that's where the problem comes into play because what you're deeming a heavy workload may mean i might not be able to go to that party because i have to do this so what's happening is school work is cutting into your leisure time for lack of a better word wrong right or in between you can't agree to that one. I can't agree. I can't disagree. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand, man. It's, it's, it's a lot. I was in school and I, and I felt like I had a lot on my plate when it came to schoolwork. But I had to do it. I remember when I got to be... I was always a little younger than the rest of the class because I went to school early. And um, as a result, I got to a point where I was the immature one in the class. And I would sometimes hold back on the work too and whatever you know why because i knew that next year everybody's like when, when it's time to leave from primary school to go to high school everybody was busting butt because they have to get the good grades to go to high school next year i was always getting good grades i was good at, in class but i got to that point where next year wasn't my year to go to high school so i wasn't as focused as somebody else you know what i'm saying um and then ultimately it there was a day that it dawned on me that I was going to school for me. I wasn't going to school for my parents. And at that point in time is when I kind of had to buckle down. I, I had the luxury of going. I went to a boarding school. And the alumni had a good relationship with the school. So you'd see those people who are doing well. You see those people that are doing all right. And you'd see those people who aren't doing too well. Because they had a good relationship. they come back. And I didn't want to be one of those that was struggling and so forth. So I had to just make up my mind. You know what? This is not for my parents. This is for me. So sometimes it's a personal, it's an internal decision. Joey, you mentioned keeping up. Is that what you said? Fitting in. Fitting in. Mm -hmm. What's going on with that? Let me know. Um, I feel like 
with like people my age, it's a there's a lot of um pressure mm-hmm. to like fit in with the right people, know the right people, wear the right brands, and, like, I've seen, like, a lot of kids will struggle with, like, it's like you gotta find your own identity, but at the same time, you want your identity to fit in with the identity of everybody around you. Mm-hmm. So, it kind of don't make sense, but it don't really have to make sense. It's just the reality of where we are now. And how does that affect you? Are you one of those people who are struggling to fit in also? Not really. Like, I have my days where sometimes I'm like, okay, like, I'm, let's say I'll, I'm going to, like, a party or something, then I'm going to, like, make the extra effort to make sure I wear something that's not going to, like, stand out. Like, I'm going to look like them at the same time. But, like, on a day-to-day, not really. Okay. So, when you're making your plans and getting ready to go out and do what you got to do, mm-hmm. half of the focus that you're putting into your attire has to do with what people think. Whether it be impressing them yeah. or just being different from them. In some way, shape, or form, yeah. it affects you. Yeah, because then you do have your people who are like, oh, I'm different, I don't dress like everybody else. But it's not like they just got up and that's just how they look. They're putting a concerted effort into not looking like everybody else. So right. either way, it's still some, it's a thought process you got to go through. I got gotcha. you. Gotcha. you. Fellas, does that affect you guys in any way, shape, or form? You have the same kind of issues? I mean... Fitting in for me, I mean, I used to want to fit in. Like, it used to be a big deal for me. Like, anybody could tell you that I would always be the one trying to fit in. But now it's more like I don't want to fit in. Like, I don't want to be noticed at all. Like, I'd rather lay low and not deal with other problems that go with that. I'd rather focus on something else that's more important. Like what? Um, Schoolwork, you know, stuff that's really going to matter in the long run. I mean, fitting in is just fitting in. I mean. Trying to fly under the radar. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to be noticed. Okay. So, based on what you just said, you've grown. Yeah. It's maturity. Yes, it is. What about you? Oh, well, I used to want to fit in to get, like, a certain girl's attention. Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't that popular when I was, like, younger. Mm -hmm. But just like he said, it doesn't bother me anymore. I don't really care too much for it. Because, like, when you're in high school, it's the time to... Focus on your grades and what you want to become in life, and what's your 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 job and your specialty going to be when you get out of high school. And you're in what grade right now? Oh, um, sophomore, tenth. Tenth grade. So you got two years to go. Yeah. So you're telling me right now in tenth grade you're really focused on the grades and the future and the whole nine, not so much the girls and just chilling right now. Well, I have the my dad talks to me about my grades and stuff. Okay. From last year, so. Okay, so dad had to talk. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then, Quay, you, your, yours was totally different from, from everybody <laughs> else's in terms of college and finances mm-hmm. and so forth. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Um, how do you prepare for that? Um, well, I just, had, I just quit my second job mm-hmm. because I got promoted at my first job, which mm-hmm. is a Chuck E. Cheese. I'm a supervisor. And I did it so that um, my parents wouldn't have to struggle. Mm-hmm. So for me to to handle two jobs at first with school mm-hmm. was very hard for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, not grade wise, but you know, to to leave work at eleven p.m. and still make it to the bus stop at at five thirty because I go to a school in a different district. Gotcha. So for me to handle that on day to day is like that's not what a regular teenager should do. But it's I know that. In the long run, it will pay off for me to go to a good college so that I know I helped my parents pay for my tuition or I did this for myself so that I can be in greater positions. So I'm talking to a teenager with two jobs, college on the brain, and, uh, <laughs> and high school at the same time. Wow. I like it. I like it a lot. Now, here's the thing. Again, it goes back to why everybody's, the different age groups are here because here's what's going to happen. Her, I noticed that her view and her response, bless you, Joe, Thank you. is different from you guys. And like I mentioned earlier, it's gotten a little gender. It really is not necessarily smarts. It's different place in life. She's at the point where in a couple of months, it's time to prepare for college. And that's what I meant when I said at some point in time, that light bulb will go off. That your future is around the corner. You know what I mean? So... It's and, and, and don't get it twisted. Your parents understand. 
Sometimes we got to push you to the limit. It's like going into the military or whatever the case may be. They're pushing you. They're pushing you. They're not necessarily trying to break you, but they're pushing you. I'm pushing you. But anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm loving having a conversation with you guys. Don't go anywhere. Keep it moving. Keep it grooving. It is homegrown. Yeah, man, and that one is Savannah from the EP, Savannah. That song's called Easy to Breathe. Um, and previously, we heard from Leela Ike, which phenomenal reggae artist. She's got a brand new single out right about now called Gati Gati, and she got biggest fan. Dope, dope, dope artist. Um, here's what's going on right now. Everybody's still in that uh, reserved mode. You know, it's, it's kind of like when, when, when you just go to school on the first day, and you don't know each other, and you just, you know, don't worry. We're getting to third week right about now when everybody's all good and clicked up and friends and whatever why i asked the question that i asked and 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 excepting for quay everybody's thing kind of came back around to the root cause of things i spoke to miss johnson earlier and she's a she, she's she's an educator at a high school and i kind of was trying to find out from her what are the issues you run into with the teenagers and she said the major thing is peer pressure all the stuff that he, the three of you mentioned stems back to that peer pressure a lot of the things that go on with teenagers right now from drug use to sex to alcohol to dropping out of school a lot of stuff if you trace it all the way back it's peer pressure it's i'd be remiss to think that there are many people out there who are in school right now hooked on drugs that started to take it just because they wanted to take it you know what i'm saying or getting into a lot of situations. When I was a kid, I'm not going to say I didn't get into anything, but if I got into something, it was me. You know, it was never, it was never peer pressure. Let me ask you about another thing that seems to be rampant in schools in different ways. Bullying. Have you guys had any experience with bullying in schools? Let's start over here with you. Um, no, I haven't been bullied myself, but I have seen it mm -hmm. in my school. And it's not... It's not nice. Right. To be honest with you. What about you, Jay? I mean, back in elementary school, I had 
a little bully. I mean, it wasn't anything serious, serious. But I mean, for a majority of the situations, I'd be the one to get blamed for, and that's kind of on my part. Right. But it's, I mean, it's not fun. I mean, for anybody that's been bullied, they know that it's not a fun feeling to be put down or, you know, to feel like you can't do something because of somebody else. Joe? Um, <clears throat> in high school, no. And I haven't seen bullying. Well, I, I guess it wouldn't be traditional bullying. But, like, when I was in elementary school, when I was in middle school, I was bullied. And just like they both said, it's not fun. It's not a nice feeling. Um, I feel like it, it changes people. When you go through certain things, you, you got to either figure out a way to deal with it or figure out a way to make it stop. And then, like, the ways you come up with to solve your problem is they could either be a positive thing or they can cause new problems. So I feel like bullying in, just, in, like in all is just a big problem like it's just like a ball that just keeps rolling and rolling it don't stop quit you ever dealt with bullying no no <laughs> no because you're a little one did no they just, they just left you alone <laughs> yeah i mean i've um i've i don't know if this is bullying you know the little, the the jokes i don't i don't think they're bullying i've seen i've seen cyber bullying but right. not with me gotcha now here's the other question and this goes anybody can answer this one we talk about bullying from the standpoint of okay am i being bullied or so forth do you guys know anybody be it friends you're not dropping names and guess what your friends ain't listening to the podcast anyways don't worry about it but people you know who engage in bullying of some some sort now sometimes we talk about bullying if it's not to the utmost extreme sometimes we sweep it under the rug and don't say it's bullying but harassing somebody who doesn't want to be harassed, who can't really deal with that harassment, it is bullying too. And it can affect them in ways that you will never know. Do any of you have friends or just colleagues that bully somebody that if you had the opportunity, you'd be like, yo, just chill? Yeah, not a friend though. Like, I don't like this person, but they are a bully. Yeah? Yeah, 100%. I don't know how to... Uh, I, I mean, I know what bullying is, but now... It seems like, you know, little jokes are being called, like, maybe bullying. And mm -hmm. some people are just, like, they're little jokes. So I'm not sure because I don't, I've never been bullied. I've never seen it for myself. So I'm not sure, like, if he, like, what he just said, is that bullying? Like, I'm, I listen to it and I'm just, like, because it's not me. So I just don't say nothing. Right, right, right. He's not messing with you or she's not messing with you. So it's like, all right, let's let it slide. Yeah, cause, and then when the person doesn't say anything, I'm like, should that be considered bullying or was that just a joke? Well, I think I think it's it's two sides to it. Bullying is the action being done by the bully. It's how it's received by the other person, too, that kind of makes it bullying. In, in other words, if they're doing something and the person they're doing it to is cool with it, laughs it off or what. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a thin-skinned person. Mm -hmm. So, you can make fun of me all you want to. You don't punch me in the face, we're good. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you do that, then we have different kind of problems. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is also, the same thing that you do to me that doesn't bother me may bother somebody else. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're doing it and you realize that it really bothers that person, then you let it go. But sometimes they keep going and they keep going and they keep going. And it's kind of like they're doing it not just for what it does to that person, but for the laughter from the audience. So what I'm getting at pretty much is, if you were doing that to somebody and I'm around, and I notice the person doesn't like it, I'm not going to laugh. I'm not going to entertain it. I might tell you, if we're cool, yo, chill, stop that. If we're not, then I probably just won't hang with you. Mm -hmm. But the extent of this bullying thing, because it seems to be a big thing. And like you said, cyberbullying. Everybody's got a phone. Everybody's on Facebook. I remember me telling Joe one time, stay off of Facebook for a minute. You would have swore, <laughs> right, that I cut Joe's hand off or one of her feet off or whatever the case may be. It was that hard to stay away. Now, I'm going to ask all of you. You've got your devices and so forth. And I'm not going to pass judgment because guess what? It's a different world. When I was a kid growing up, I was running home to go get on the phone to go call my girl or whoever I wanted to call. I liked or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But I also had the option to detach. If you, if you and I had some issue during the school day, I would have to see you again the next day for it to resume. 
If it was a Friday, I had to see again after the weekend for it to resume. But now, based on social media and everything, if you have an issue now, it's going on on your way to the bus stop. It's going on while you're on the bus. It's going on while you're home. Going on while you're taking a shower. And it never stops because of the fact that you're always connected. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, when it, again, we're still on the, the topic of bullying. If somebody around you is bullying somebody, do you have the wherewithal to tell them to chill? No. I do. Yeah, I do. You do? Yeah. Uh, I don't know because uh, nobody here can say they don't crack jokes. So I don't, True. you know, nobody here can say, oh, my jokes don't go that far. My, like, you you know you said a joke that's like went far and you probably yourself couldn't catch yourself. So me, I definitely can't catch you if you can't catch yourself. Like, <laughs> if your joke went too far, I, I can't do that. I can't say nothing about it. I, I don't. I don't. No, and I got you. And again, like I said. Jokes. I was talking. To, I had an episode of the podcast where I spoke to a mental health, a, a professional mental health therapist, our specialist, and we had that conversation in terms of what bullying is making a joke about something bullying. Not necessarily, not necessarily at all. Because again, it's how far you take it. If you're mm-hmm. okay, that same joke that you you were good with. Mm-hmm. If the person started to cry, and and you saw that they were spazzing out and they can't handle it. Would you, you probably still wouldn't be there laughing. Yeah. Because you'd realize that, okay, it's a bit much. Mm-hmm. Now, if the person continued and they're preying on that person because they deemed the person, then that's where it becomes bullying. bullying. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then it's physical too, because what about the bullies that want to fight? Mm-hmm. That's where the problem comes in, in all honesty. Because, and that's, that also stems back to the whole social media thing. That's why personally I kind of gave up Facebook for my senior year. Because, when you start off with a problem in school and then you go home, everybody becomes Batman when they're home and they have something to, like, shield behind. They, all of a sudden, things they would never say to your face, they have the audacity to say it and make it public. Like, and that's where now you have a person who is taking it personal because it's something, probably something really deep that should have never been said. But now not only have you said it to that person, you said it to the whole world. It's going viral. Everybody's sharing. Everybody's laughing at it. Somebody's going to really be tight and then that's how you end up having a fight. Gotcha. Yeah, Michael Vick. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. <laughs> All right, well, I'm, I'm fellas, like you said, you've never really dealt with... You're, you're, you're an athlete. Yeah. So you play football. Soccer. Soccer. Yeah. So nine times out of ten, you're not the one that are going to bully. No. You know what I mean? Because you're, you're one of the jocks. Yeah, you know I mean you hang with the cool kids, but you, you but you still have the flexibility and the freedom to hang with whomever you want to. Yeah. So they're not gonna necessarily bully you. Very rarely do you see somebody on the team, be it the soccer team, the basketball team, the football team, whatever the case may be, that's being bullied. That's not true. Yeah? Not at all. Talk to me. I've seen it a bunch of times, especially with freshmen. The bench warmers. Yeah, when you have, especially athletes. on me. I don't yeah. know. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But if they have, the, if they have nah, a jersey, they, they have, they, they but have then a if jersey. you say that to them, then they get mad, and then now, now you know, like for me, the track team, half of our athletes are just doing it because they need credits, and you'll say, "Oh, you're not an athlete. You can't run. Why well, I gotta teach you how to run? You don't know how to run." And then like they get they. <laughs> They take it personal and they get mad and then now it's like a conflict back and forth between like the varsity athletes and the um the freshman athletes because you're hurting their feelings or whatever. Even though, you know, to you it's just a little, it's a joke, it's a simple joke. Even the coach will get in on it. But the minute it becomes personal for, a per- for the other person, that's when all of a sudden it's deemed bu- bullying and now all of a sudden you got to do mediation. So I wouldn't say they don't get bullied. Mm-hmm. I would say it's a different type of bullying. Like, to an outsider looking in, they wouldn't say it's bullying. Because it's just like, if two people see two sibling, siblings picking on each other, they're not going to say, oh, that's sibling abuse. Right. But then you have an agent come in and investigate it, and now all of a sudden it's abuse. What do you think? Um, um, for me, I, I don't get bullied on the, on the fact that I play soccer. It's like, I get joked on. Because right. like, like all the other black people, they're like, yo, you bl- you're, like, you're not a real black person. Cause like you black and you play soccer and I'm like, I just all I do is like I'm like at the end of the day, I'm black and on varsity and like what are you what are you guys doing? Y'all not doing nothing, so I was like you can't come at my neck, right? And cause I'm doing something for myself like you know and it's kind of big like cause where I live it's very Hispanic populated mm-hmm. and for me to be on the soccer team, right? It's like and be good at it. Yeah, 
Yeah. I broke barriers. So it's like, you know. Yeah, well, uh, in, then in that case, that's hate. That's jealousy. Yeah, so, you know hate. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and people don't know how to, how, to, how to translate that. So that's what they're doing. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, I was just kidding when I said the whole United Athlete thing. Um, I've been on sports teams, and that happens in terms of camaraderie. You'll always have, because you start off, when I started off, I didn't have an option. I, I, could, I could keep goal like I also was a midfielder. So to get in on the team, I went in the goal, and then it became not an option. That's what I was told to do. And you're coming up your first year in it, and you know certain things you may go through that the other senior guys won't go through. But then next year, you're no longer the freshman, so it's a new guy that goes through that. But I'm, and that's that's pretty much rituals and coming through. I'm bullying. I'm talking about you're not gonna physically beat somebody up or some what they call hazing and all that crap. You know what I mean? That's what I'm talking about when I say bullying, bullying, and bullying. And then even the concept of the cyberbullying, because the issue is. If you go at somebody and the person says, or uh, forget the person saying it, you see that they can't handle it. That's where you stop. But if you don't stop, then that's where the bullying begins. And what my experience has been, you know who the bullies are? The most coward people you can find. A hundred percent. I've had, I'll give you a perfect example. I had... There was a guy who in school was bullying one of my friends. He never came my way with it, but he was bullying one of my friends. And apparently, it got boring. So he decided, okay, it's coming my way, right? That was like on a Friday. I think the Sunday, I saw him, just me, just him, right? So I'm ready for it right now. I'm like, okay, it is what it is. This guy proactively came up to me like we were friends you know what i mean hey what's up man what's going on blah 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 and i'm like yo just 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 chill please <laughs> but because it was just me and you and you don't have an audience to entertain and you don't have your boys around to, 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 to protect you if stuff went down then all of a sudden we're cool the coward the most coward people and a lot of times what they're doing too is being proactive a lot of times they are insecure themselves so they're coming at you before you get the opportunity to come at them it's all fun and games until somebody gets hurt because the truth is the person you're bullying could react in a way that you're not prepared for. Very, very not prepared for. Like school food? Like school, yep. It, it happens. But I think like a problem that we have is like you guys as adults, mm -hmm. whatever bullying that y'all went through in your childhood that y'all experienced, you're expecting it to be the exact same with us. So then when you're observing it, a situation that is bullying, like you bullying would have no idea because like you're expecting it to be, it's like you're expecting it to look a specific way and it doesn't look that way. So then when it mm. goes down the way it does, you're like, well, I didn't even see this coming because right, right. it's, I don't know how to explain it other than that. No, you explain it well. I, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. And it's not just with bullying. It's with a lot of things. It's with a lot of things. It's, it's drugs. It's a whole bunch of things. You're expecting certain things to look the way you're familiar with, and it's just not. I understand completely. Again, going back to the whole technology thing, it's a scenario where it's very difficult for you to detach from your devices because that you were born with that. I, I tell people, when it comes to music also, when I try to get somebody your age to buy music, they look at me a little funny. Because you were born in the Napster age, you were born in the streaming age, you were born in the age where music is free. You were born in the SoundCloud age and the YouTube age. I was born in the age where you got to buy a cassette and buy a CD and buy it. You know what I'm saying? So right now, you guys feel all entitled to this free stuff that it's hard for me to convince you. Javon, when's the last time you bought some music? Um... Wow. Um, your first album. <laughs> you did not album. buy it. <laughs> I, I, that's, the, or that's honestly like like the one of the CDs that I ever remember having. I mean, I've seen CDs here and there, but ones that I've owned, it hasn't been a lot. Um, but I, even to download, though, a lot of times pe we live in the era where even to download the music, you're downloading it, but for free. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? If you, It's not your first instinct to go buy it because it's just not what... You, and I'm just using it as an example. When we talk what Joey said, what she said, a lot of things look different to us so we think it's not real. Am I right? 100%. Yeah, So what, and, and that's something that I guess we've got to... 
we've got to take a step off and understand. Because it could be as simple as you see two girls walking in opposite directions coming down the hallway and one of them is glaring at the other one. So the other one kind of, you know, she waits for the other person to pass. So, like, I've seen that happen in school and my guidance counselor is like, oh, she's just letting her pass. I'm like, no, they've been beefing on Facebook. Like, and she completely had no idea. Or a comment, you know, adults would be like, oh, just leave it alone, you know. Yeah. No, that comment goes, you know, further than, you know. I hear you. I'm not going to say no. What I will say is this. Facebook or anywhere or whatever the case may be. It's very, I'm, and again, now here's the other thing. Again, Miss Johnson said it today too. Whereas I was not the person to make certain things bother me. In this day and age, there's still some kids out there that that Facebook comment, they're not going to let bother them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for me, because I remember, and I, Joe, I'm not going to throw you out there, but I remember <laughs> making fun of you. One, I used to make fun of her like, Joe, they're dancing on your page. You know what I mean? I'd be like, like literally figured like somebody's on your page moving around. Because she's like, they're on my page, kiki and I'm doing what I'm like, Joe, <laughs> they're not really on the page, you know. But it's a scenario. Because <laughs> <laughs> <No. What? laughs> like what? somebody had ha ha in one of my pictures, and I took that so per. I was like, "What are you laughing at?" Like, you think, you think you're a joke? that's what yeah. I, I got mad. I was like, "What's the joke?" And Daddy's like, "Then my dance playing PH. I'm like, "Yes." So I kept making fun of her, like literally, like somebody's on your page just dancing on the page, and she was mad at me. <laughs> but but I, I, here's why I say I understand what you're talking about. Again, I went to boarding school, and. There was no Facebook then, but the same issues can arise because I had situations where sometimes this person just doesn't like that person for one reason or another. I've had scenarios where two persons are fighting, but what, you know what started the fight? One guy made a joke, the other guy laughed, but we're not homies, so don't be <laughs> laughing at my joke. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Nah. So, so it had nothing to do with, the, you just didn't like the guy. Mm-hmm. So you used whatever reason or whatever excuse you could mm-hmm. to go get in that fight. As soon as he laughed. As soon as he laughed. Yo, don't laugh at my joke. It's a joke. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing right now where I say, I, I, I understand. But I'm also saying this. There are things you can walk away from. Because no matter what, back in the day and today, people press people who they know it bothers. You do the same thing to three people and it bothers one person a lot and it, does, it rolls off the shoulders of the others. That's not entertaining. So they'll focus on the one person that's really, really bothered by it. You know what I mean? And the one thing I'll ask all teenagers, I'll implore you is that when you see bullying, don't support it. If it's one of your friends and you think you're cool enough with them, find a way. You might not necessarily be able to stop them and say, yo, stop doing this. But take them out of the situation or whatever the case may be. You can't tell me that you can't have a one-on-one conversation with somebody and be like, yo, just low him now. Leave that guy. Leave that girl. But then a lot of times what it is is, like, you would just want to mind your business. Like, I'm not saying... I'm, I would say for me, because I don't have any friends that bully other people, but I'll observe somebody doing something, and then people will look at me like, well, you talk a lot, so why you don't say something? And I'm like, nah, I'm good. Like, I just don't want to get involved. So I feel like that's a problem more than anything else, that nobody wants to step up. I hear you. I hear you. All right, well, like I said, we're talking about a bunch of things tonight. Just tapping in and touching base with these teenagers and making sure that they're good. Don't go nowhere. Keep it moving. Keep it grooving. It's homegrown. YG. YG. Yes, indeed. I realize. I need joy, is it? Uh, it's a long road still, you know. It's about it. But give thanks to the people, you must say, deep joy, chada, you see. You go for all of the real people, you must say, stop from sea. In a real life, you see. Motivation is a strong word in relation to the world. So who motivate me? Are you will create me? You don't have to say another word. Motivation is a strong word in relation to the world. So who motivate me? Are you will create me? When me stress out and tired Current get rich so me no mother feel wired Back in the days me sing a song me zeal fired In recent time me contemplate to retire oh, oh. Few YouTube and inspired Greatness lift the people spirit real higher Look what transpired when your song gets admired Say me a go bust me go no call them a liar no oh, oh. Motivation is a strong word in relation to the works So who motivate me and you will create me You don't have to say another word Motivation is a strong word In relation to the 
man to the world So who motivate me and you help me in me Give thanks to listen to me songs Me say me a ghost up and them say sing another one The future is a dance so fulfill another plan Use my voice turn around these inner city gangs Life goes on, make entry Born to do great things, yeah Evidently check my fan page And the comments well plenty Them want to see the joy So them who no bench me, no Motivation is a strong word In relation to the works So who motivate me And you will create me You don't have to say another word, no Motivation Motivation Who motivate me and you will create me Big up on TV tweet greatness Assassin collab real greatness Google said don't stop sing greatness Eyes are bleed still I say bring greatness Biggest team has so we steam greatness Mama Ellie Skelly Queen greatness Every radio station tuning greatness Oh yes oh yes oh yes yeah, man, we're back, like I said, hanging out with the teenagers today. And that one is motivation from the man called Deep Jai, Big Bad Artist. I'm going to have a word with him later on, you know, look out for that. Um, we just were talking about bullying and the different forms of bullying that there is. And, and you know, we're not going through it theoretically. We're not going through it scientifically in a whole now. We're just having convo. All right. Um, here's another thing, too. And, and again, you signed a waiver at the door so we can talk. Hall pass. It's all good. We'll change up the names. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and this goes right back to the whole peer pressure thing right about now. Sex amongst the youth and the young people. <laughs> <laughs> so, <I> mean, <laughs> now, that is sometimes <laughs> a guilty people. What, what's up? <laughs> Why you leave me you finna, you, my dad's in there? <laughs> <laughs> you can't edit this. You can't edit this. You can't edit this. They're, 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 they're gonna be okay. They're cool. Hall pass. Hall pass. Hall pass. I'm not talking about you. Javon, I know you got kids, all right? So that's not the point. No. All right. No about the twins. Nah, we don't slip up No? You're living right. You're living right. Not righteous, but right. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. But here's the thing. <laughs> and I'm approaching it differently because I, I want you guys to be to be honest. I don't want you to think, oh, Jesus is my savior. I don't, no, no, no. All right? <laughs> so <laughs> the thing is, even that is coming from a peer pressure standpoint. Because as I have conversation with some of the teenagers, I realize that the whole concept of the sex thing, because because it's not just sex, it's promiscuity too. It's kind of like, and I'm going to throw the word out there, it's kind of like it's cool to be a hoe nowadays. It's like hoes in, like big earrings and hand, you know what I mean? And, and, and shell toes, they're back in style, being a hoe is cool. So you're not in it for a relationship, you're in it. And, 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 and what I notice nowadays too is that the, the girls are even worse and more aggressive than are the guys. When I was growing up, you have to go pursue somebody. You have to try. No, you just got to show up. And the girls are there. My thing pretty much is, how much of that is peer pressure? How much of that is you doing that to impress the homies so that you have something to go talk on? And I know how you guys are, so you exaggerate everything too. You know what I mean? Went over here, met Keisha, all was well. When you come back, I tell the story. Yo, went over there, met Keisha. When I left there, went over to Kim. or whatever. Just exaggerating. But how much of that is peer pressure? And how much is that just you and your wants and needs and wanting to do you? And uh, ironic as it's st- it, it sounds, and this is not you consenting that you're doing it, but you know people that are and friends are and so forth. Let's start on the right side of the room. Quay, how much of that <laughs> do you think is just people doing what they're doing and living their life? Or how much of that is peer pressure? Um... Well, it starts as peer pressure with the fact that you have to even go repeat it. If you know, like you want somebody's opinion if you have to go tell them where you were or what you did. You want somebody's acknowledging you and and that you're you're doing that now. Like I'm active. Yeah, like you want them to know. So you wanna fit in. You wanna be able to tell people 
I did whatever I did. So that right there is peer pressure. You that's sh- you. That's you um, succumbing to, to peer pressure. Yeah. Like if, if you're not interested in, if you're just doing it and you're not interested in what anybody else has to think, then you're just you and you're just it, it, like you're not um, asking for attention. Right, right, right. Joe? Hmm? What do you think? Repeat the question. The question is, <laughs> how much of teenagers having sex mm-hmm. is them wanting to have sex versus <clears throat> peer pressure, them trying to appease the crowd and trying to be, yo, I'm, I'm it. That's what's going on right now. That's the thing. I'm, 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 I'm growing. I'm cool. Okay. Um, I guess I, I would have to break it down into like boy and girl. So like for boys... Honestly, I don't even think I have to. I think I don't think it's peer pressure anymore. I know at a point in time it may have been cuz there's health class for that reason. But like at this point in time, I genuinely don't think it's peer pressure. I think like you said, ho is cool now. So like everybody just just having sex. Like they just it's not really a oh, I want to fit in or oh, I can't be a virgin or oh, they just doing it cuz they want to do it. Um, there's no repercussions anymore. We have Planned Parenthood, so... There's no repercussions? I mean... I'm going to tell you a couple of things they can't catch. You see the whole... No, no, no. I'm not... Wait, 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 wait. I'm not saying that. Planned Parenthood. But I'm saying, like, when you no longer have to go to your parent and be like, hey, I think I caught something, you could just go into a, um, a clinic anonymously and be like, I think I need a checkup, and they'll prescribe you whatever, whatever, and it's all free. Like, a lot of people are no longer looking at it like, oh, okay, if I do this, then this and this can go wrong. They're looking at it like, well, whatever happens, happens. I'm covered. I'm a, okay, I'm going to get this. Yeah, Joe, maybe say, you live in New York, right? Yeah. Okay, so it seems like things run a little different in your state. So let's, let, <laughs> let's, let's, let's stay on it. So mm-hmm. people are doing that right now mm-hmm. because if they catch something, mm-hmm. there's preventative measures. 100%. When when there's when there's more things that you cannot get rid of than things you can get rid but of. But that's that's see that's the adulthood peeking out. Cause you're thinking about okay, you know you're AIDS. thinking about all all yeah. the possibilities. Only adults think about AIDS. I'm not saying I'm saying with you're it's thinking about scary. everything that could go wrong potentially. But with girls my age, and I don't want to say any names, but specifically like three girls on my, top of my head right that's now. That's not the point. Don't do they're that. They're like with them. They're thinking of if I catch chlamydia. I can go to the clinic. If I catch gonorrhea, I can go to the clinic. Mm-hmm. If he has herpes, I'm going to see it. Like, that's how they think. So in their head, there's nothing to, there's no risk. There's no fear. So they've taken out a checklist of the things that they, that, that they're, so what about the, what, what about the big, what about the big guns? Like what the about, AIDS? like the AIDS and the, yeah, what about that? That's the, I don't know. And that's the new the one, them, can you have some AIDS supercharged HG, Z, <laughs> that matter about the turbo version, the G. Wait, where's the condoms? That that I, I, I was I was gonna I was gonna get to that you know because yeah. even if you're having if you're sexually active as a teenager which you shouldn't be, right? Mm-hmm. You're telling me mm-hmm. that you're not using. You're not. There's no form of protection with it, so you can't because you know that somewhere. That's like saying you know what. I'm going to go, I'm, I'm, I'm going to run through here to this gang violence. Whatever. I'm not going. You know what I mean? I'm not going to have a gun with me because if they shoot me, then I'm going to go home and get my gun <laughs> and come back. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not dumb because, like I said, also I know someone who that's how she thought, and then she figured, okay, I can take Plan B. She went to Planned Parenthood the next day; she was already pregnant. So I'm not saying that their logic is a hundred percent makes sense, but I'm just saying that's how a lot of people. I don't want to say a lot of people. That's how girls now, because it's not even boys anymore. Because boys will more likely pull out a condom, but like girls now, that's. That's what's on their mind. Like, oh, if something happens, I'm good. I could just... Even abortions are free now. Like, they, nobody... Where? In New York. It's free? What? Oh. <laughs> nah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Like, 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 huh? What's the address? But, um... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're... If you get pregnant... If you're pregnant and you're... I think you're, like, one... A f- I don't remember how many weeks. But it's a specific amount of weeks that if you're pregnant on that whatever then the abortion is free because it's not a major operation. So hold up. Let me ask you a question. Now, yeah. because where are you getting this info? Because it sounds to me that this this is... You've got education. Yeah. So, so it's a scenario where this... Is this just normal conversation around school? This is what you call health class that you need one credit of to graduate from high school. Oh, so there, this York. is health class. This is health class. All right, here's the thing. Now, I remember there's a time when people used to 
parents used to complain about that health class. I'm going to get to you in a second, Javon. Parents used to complain about health class and condoms in schools and whatnot. Because I'm going to get to you um, about this too. Because we always complain about condoms in schools. Because of the fact that people feel like it was encouraging. Mm -hmm. Right? So you, you, you have that, 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 that um, crossroads here. Am I encouraging something? <coughs> or am I acknowledging the fact that it's happening and I'm protecting these people? You know what I mean? Yes, because um, I'm in a, a speak out club for mm -hmm. AIDS and HIV. Mm -hmm. And we have a table and we do have pamphlets of HIV, AIDS, any other sexually transmitted um, diseases. And then we have a bucket of condoms. Mm -hmm. So we can't just tell you, hey, um, no sex is safe sex, which it is. But that's the, the genre and the area that we're in that's having sex. So why don't we try to protect it? more than, you know, telling you what to do because you're not going to listen. From a teenager to a teenager, you don't care what I'm saying if I'm telling you no. So even if you are doing it, that's why we try to protect it and we still give out condoms. However, I think with, like, my health classes, I do think it's a little bit extreme because when you start telling a bunch of horny teenagers that they can have sex with no repercussions, they're going to have sex. You're telling them, oh, wait, don't do this, da 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 but if you do do it, you're valid. Like, they're obviously going to do it now. It's like telling somebody if they rob a bank, they're not going to get arrested. Not, not, no, not everybody. Because some people, once you, once, that's why we have the pamphlets. These are what you can get. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you can try it, you know, go ahead. But if you do, we, you know. This might happen. Yeah, so have this. Just in case. And this and the pamphlet's got photos in it. It's not a drawing. Yeah. It's not a drawing. <laughs> Somebody didn't draw that. Yeah. That's a so, picture. Yeah. Which, so, ironically, a lot of parents are now complaining that they don't want their kids to see the pictures. Well, that's why we give them. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we give them. Jay, what were you saying, though? Um, I don't really think... I mean... Peer pressure? I mean, I don't believe it's peer pressure. I mean, unless you're like... Unless, you mean, because I know people who have had sex, and I know people who haven't had sex. And I mean, I feel like, unless you're like a guy that's like, oh, I'm, I, I want to lose it, like, I really want to lose it, like, and people are out there, you know, telling you, yeah, rock on, you know, go do that, slang swung. <laughs> like, it's, I mean, it's what? Hold on, what? What did they say? S slang swung. <laughs> What's the word? Slang is <laughs> No. What does that mean? Sleep, 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 slang, 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 slang. Okay. I mean, unless they're, okay. I mean, out there telling you, yeah, go for it. I mean, people won't just do it to do it. I mean, I mean. Well, well, here's the deal. If people are doing it just to do it, right? If you're doing it just to do it, how come people know that you're doing it? Exactly. That's, that's where I was that's getting was, at it. I mean, I know some people that don't go out and say that they've had sex, but if you go and ask them, they'll tell you, "Yes, I've had sex." It's not really where you know, if you if you're out there yelling out like, "Yeah, you know, I just smashed this chick," and you know, that's peer pressure. I mean, that's, that's peer pressure. Yeah. But if you're doing it, and you know, somebody goes up to you and asks you, you're not telling anybody else, and you know, you they're the first person you're telling, or you know, you don't tell it often. I mean, you're not out there just blurting out your business. If somebody comes up to you and asks you. And you, you tell give them, them the answer that you're yes, you're having sex. I, that's not really peer pressure. I got you. I got you. That's I what I was saying in the beginning. You know, people who are trying to fit in, mm -hmm. and sex is pressuring them. Mm -hmm. Then you you tell everybody. You know the people that are trying to fit in. Right. Who's telling who they did and when and how and where? Half the right. time the story be made up. Yeah, that. <laughs> and no right. facts behind it. I mean, um, I feel like. If you're like a guy or a girl that doesn't can't get it easy, mm -hmm. if like the opportunity is there, mm -hmm. you will get it and then you will want to tell people about it. So like people, they're like, oh, cool right, point. He's, yeah, he's chill, oh, blah, blah, blah. he just got some, blah blah. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's why, not really peer pressure, but it's that, just that leads boastful. to people don't okay yeah, to talk about it, you know, to yeah, like fit in basically. I hear you. I hear you. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And, and here's the deal. Let me just be real. And like I'm telling you guys, none of this is new. It doesn't mean it wasn't whack back then, too. You know what I'm saying? Because here's the deal. Who amongst, okay, in the room would just say teenagers should not be having sex? Right? Let, let's, we, we, we're protecting. We're doing the whole nine. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Half the room left. So the thing is... <laughs> So, 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 who, uh, 
feel like I, I don't want gonna... you to ask this question. So it's a scenario where how about we just say teenagers should not be having sex. Do you think teenagers should be having sex? See, see the thing about sex is this. It's not just physical, it's emotional. Not even I mean, not necessarily. That's what I was about to say. Nowadays, um, you know I how girls used to be the ones that like get emotional, get attached. Nowadays, it's like the opposite. Like the now, That's why they shouldn't. The be. girls are just they. They know what they want. They get it. They leave. And I'm baffled because it it don't make any sense to me. Slong searchers. What? What's that, Javon? Slong searchers. No, but what 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 I'm saying is, no matter how you slice and dice it, here's the thing. You are a human being. Now, here's the thing. You may say that there's no emotion attached to it, right? The emotion is attached to it when you get emotionally attached to that person. Mm -hmm. Something, at some time, at some point, you will. Unless you... Some people see real hoes. I'm not going... That's what they do. But here's the thing. Even those people get attached to somebody... Right? Emotionally attached to somebody. So what I'm getting at pretty much is this. That also con- that, that also adds another dynamic to your life. Another thing that you have to worry about. You're in school worrying about these grades. <coughs> Javon already said that the workload is heavy. Mm-hmm. So you have this heavy workload. But then you got over-emotional Keisha, Keisha over there who is now attached to you a certain way because you're sexually involved with her. Mm-hmm. Now, when I ask you what's going on in your life, you would never one day get up and say to me, man, the sex load is just too much. No, <laughs> but the workload is. <laughs> you, know, you, you know what I'm saying? You are deciding what the issue really is. And I'm, that's what I'm saying. You stay away. That's why I'm not, I'm not to get biblical, but that's kind of why they said that sex is reserved for married people. Mm-hmm. One, adults too, because no matter how you swing it, there's emotions there's endorphins. There's different things going off in, in one's body once you get there that wasn't going on before that. And that will affect the decisions that you make. But that's all us getting logical. What about the things that you can catch? People Back in the day, catching a... This is a boy. Sometimes they catch a baby mother and I catch something else. And at this day and age, sometimes the baby mom <laughs> is the easiest thing you could catch because the other stuff that you catch ain't going nowhere. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's just like everybody's just fearless running through doing what they do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, Jay? I mean, half of these females aren't loyal. So, I mean, if you, if you really get <laughs> attached, if you, if you really get attached to, 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 to it like that, I mean, you're, they're, they're really not. I mean, if, if you're not loyal in the first place to begin with, you're not going to care who you're getting it from. So I don't really believe that a lot of people are getting attached to it but more in the relationship as you said like if you're if you're attached to somebody relationship wise and that is a factor i mean it's a factor i mean some people consider um kissing a form of oral sex so i mean and everyone kisses i mean you can't tell me that you haven't kissed somebody i mean unless you haven't kissed somebody but <laughs> Wait, can, like, like unless you can't kiss somebody like unless you you're like over here and like dang you know and ain't nobody want to love me. I'm not over here getting no type Yo, of lips. You know? But I mean, like you got, you got to no I mean, type of lips. Yeah, but I mean, a majority of people nowadays have, have, has had some type of you know kissing affair with somebody else. So and even that, you ever so, heard about the thing they call mono? Yeah, I, yeah, mono. Yeah, I know mono. mono <laughs> you know what's crazy? Mono pretty much too is that people walking around kissing people. I think it's gross. It is. I mean, people drink alcohol, and alcohol has terrible effects, but that doesn't stop them from drinking alcohol. You know what? You, you, you're defending this. Listen, here's the deal. I'm going to let it roll because when you start quoting the great theologist Christopher Maurice Brown and saying these girls ain't loyal, you're quoting it like it's a scripture. That means you, you, you're convicted. So I'm not saying no. I get you. I get you. But the thing is... That's Chris Brown whole name. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was like, who is that? Like, <laughs> AKA Breezy. But uh, when you start quoting Chris Brown, you know it just got real. But th- the truth is, sex is an adult thing. And when children engage <coughs> in adult things, things go wrong. Things go wrong. I disagree. You disagree? <laughs> I disagree. All right. So why do you disagree? Um, I don't disagree with the whole thing. I just disagree that you said sex is an adult thing. Oh, so it's, you think it's okay for children? I'm not saying that either. I just disagree with 
your term like okay so what 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 then then educate me i'm okay, here to be enlightened if too. you look sex up in the dictionary it doesn't say an adult thing it if doesn't you look have it up like in the age. bible it does what does it say hmm? what does it say it's well first of all it's for married people for married but okay but, but children can't be getting married yeah you can you can legally yeah, exactly. get married at 16 mm-hmm I mean, oh, it, so it you doesn't guys, you guys say circumventing yeah, it, the laws right here. I mean, it doesn't. That's what I'm disagreeing. I, it doesn't say an adult thing. It, it does say marriage, but it doesn't say an adult thing. Because what about countries where you get married at twelve? Yeah, like the old days. Be on your Pocahontas stone. India. Well, the thing is this. Again, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a theologist. So I'm not gonna go down those roads with you. Mm. What I'm saying pretty much is this. It's something for responsible people when you and, and, and excuse your judgment when you're in school trying to get them grades. That's not what you're supposed to be focused on. I mean, I'm just saying, we, because here's the deal. Ultimately, what's outside of the AIDS and all them thing that we're mm-hmm. it's going on right now. Mm-hmm. What was ultimately the end purpose of sex to conceive? OK, so should children be conceiving children? No. no. OK, so we'll, we'll explain that. Break it down to me now. quick. Okay? <laughs> like that's where you get like that's where I what I said comes in like now I feel like there was a point in time where people were having sex for peer pressure but then they would get scared to not have sex because they didn't want to have a kid now when you take that out of the equation when you're saying to them like don't worry about it just come here and we'll give you plan B there's I, I, I understand what you're saying I, I, I totally totally understand and get and what yes, you're saying but the reason why changed. things yeah and I get it But what I'm looking at pretty much is this. I'm not here to justify why people do what they do. I'm just here to say it don't make it right. And the truth is it could go left. Here's one thing. Everybody's cool except the person who got pregnant. You you, you got 10 homegirls. And you guys always hanging around. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You and your 10 homegirls are hanging around and everybody's good. And you're taking your chances and your risks and whatever the case may be. One of them get pregnant. Get HIV, get herpes, get a, a, a bunch of all of them, right? Do you think that person sits down and say, man, caught all this stuff, but it was well worth it. But that's the problem. Like, not like the AIDS and stuff. I don't know nobody that's happy about that. But like, I know a lot of people. But the herpes, they cool with. <laughs> I know a lot of That girls, little syphilis is I. You can get rid of it. <laughs> that chlamydia. That's cool. No, like, actually. You can't, no, you can you can let it go away, but it's still a trace in your body. Here's the thing. What, what you got to realize is this. The, the, the scientific so part like, about it is this. The ones that are bacteria-based can go away. The ones yeah, that are viral-based virus based cannot go not. away. AIDS, herpes, stuff like that never, never goes, goes away. away. Syphilis can. Gonorrhea can. I'm chilling. I don't got that. So. Huh? <laughs> I don't got that. So you I'm say chilling. you took the test. No, I ain't taking the test. You got a C+. I don't mess with dirty girls. Uh, you don't know what dirty girls are? I mean, like... Everybody's shower is a little clean. The thing though, like, like nobody's gonna tell you. Okay. They really? Pass. So you so really what, think, what about yeah. Undercover hoes. Yeah. yeah. You got a lot of those. Undercover. I mean, like. So uh, you just know everybody she's been with. Not everybody, but like, if I study you and see that you like not really. How long you study him? <sighs> I mean, like, if you're not rocking with a certain type of people, there's and, no like, Carfax, man. Mm-hmm. You like a. You gotta like, send like, her to Planned Parenthood and ask for the whole facts. <laughs> you want the paper. Okay. <laughs> PG I mean, thirteen. PG thirteen. Here's 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 the thing. I hear what you're saying, but what I'll say is this: I'm not take it from an older man to a fourteen year old, a fifteen year old. You, everybody, and a mama, <laughs> looks clean and look good unless they're a crackhead, right? <laughs> if you, because here's the here's the deal. You you live in New York. Yeah. Let's say you move to Florida tomorrow, <clears throat> right? I keep using the word. I hope I'm not offending any Keishas out there. But Keisha's on the Keisha come down, right? <laughs> Keisha has been with everybody in Deerfield, Palm Beach, Boca, and Lake Worth, right? <laughs> she, she just moved down to Margate. Fresh. Nobody in Margate knows her. You're from New York. You come down. You don't know her either. You start wife and Keisha. I mean, I'd be hurt. If Keisha she got more miles than a rental. If she <laughs> lying to me, I'd be hurt. Oh my god. Yeah. I'll, huh? be real, I'll be real hurt. <coughs> yeah, but who me. goes around fla- bringing out their their their, their car facts and saying, "Hey, look at my odometer." I mean, if she tell me I got if she got AIDS, I'm not going. No, no, I'm not talking about. It doesn't, what it's not, it's not, but what, what if she don't even know that she got? No, AIDS. But what if she does not have AIDS? What if she does not have AIDS? The fact that she slept with 35 dudes in in eight months. You know, <laughs> then past news is past news. Huh? Uh, no, you see, you're wild. Past news is past news. I'm going to play this tune right here. Listen. 
<laughs> Don't go nowhere. Keep it moving. Keep it grooving. It is homegrown. Quiff them. Cash flow. One version. In a real life. One version. One version. Them seminar boss swear. That me your enough say. Me for steer with the crops there. Them try every little thing for stop the success. Although the road rugged and rough, me no give up. <laughs> the mount of struggles for my fears, man, I forgive thanks in a real life. In a real life. I pray, man, I pray, and I go on all the faith in a real life. In a real life. The mount of struggles for my fears, man, I forgive thanks in a real life. In a real life. No fuse to say me not rich, no way. But still, man, they all survive. Well, Enough see me smile on all my life And happy more while a little rice and mackerel Still my whole of faith and a call pan Still a sick off for make it in a life Me know man happy People might see me a smile and believe Say everything fine and just through them can See the inside more while man happy Tug it out when hungry at twist stripe Cause life it rocky like a ill ride The amount of struggles for my fears Man happy give thanks in a real life In a real life Free and I go and want to fear it in a real life, real life. Struggles for my fears, man, I be give thanks in a real life, in a real life. No views to say me not rich, no way. But still me a survive More while me a fi sit down and I wonder how the wicked gone through And good people stuck and can't move More while little brother, little sister Can't go to school, mommy stress Sometimes she confused, yeah Me a fi wonder why life so hard Nothing a change although we try so hard, yeah Sometimes I feel fi give up Me really feel fi give up, me a Beg you up like your lord Got these troubles for my fears Man a fi give thanks in a real life In a real life I pray, me I pray, and I go and hold the faith in a real life, in a real life. Struggles for my face, man, I be give thanks in a real life, in a real life. No fuse to say me not rich, no way. Dirty bad mind. Well, enough see me smile on all my life, and happy more while a little rice and mackerel. Still me hold the faith and I call pan still a sick off for make it in a life. Me know man happy. People might see me a smile and believe say everything fine. I just through them can't see the inside more while man happy. Talk it out when hungry at twist stripe cause life it rocky like a ill ride. The most I struggle so my fears man happy give thanks in a real life, in a real life. Free and I go and want to fear it in a real life, real life. Struggle so my fears, man, I be give thanks in a real life, in a real life. No fuse to say me not rich, no way, but still me I survive. Well, the struggle so my fears, man, I be give thanks in a real life, in a real life. Free me a free and I go and want to fear it in a real life. Yeah, man, and that one is version. A song called In a Real Life. Big bug artist, I know. I think he has an album coming out right now. Wicked, wicked, wicked with artists. Make sure you go out and check out his music. All right, guys, we're almost, we're not veer off yet because that, that, that was very important. Um, a, a very, very important topic. So here's the deal. Before we move on, like I said, it's not a scenario where we're trying to decipher what right or wrong. Because sometimes what we focus on is not right and wrong, and it's the degrees of right and wrong. Mm-hmm. And if you sit down and listen, you, 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 I, I, in the past segment, we listened to all kind of circumvention as to how to make the scenario right. <laughs> Truth be told, at this point in time, in the, the age of a teenager, we got 15, we got 16, and we got 17. The reason why we chose the age range pretty much is because the ones that are 17 are almost out the door. 18 is around the corner. They're pretty much young adults right but here's the deal there's no 16 15 14 13 year old person right now who's pregnant or who's going to give birth to a child or who has given birth to a child that's not in a bad situation no matter how you slice it and dice it life affected forever yes you have some people where parents will help out on whatever the case may be but the truth is none of them I don't think you can have a conversation with and they'd say, listen, if I had to do this all over again, this is if they're being honest, I'd do it all over again. I don't know anybody right now that's taking a bunch of AIDS medication that'll say to you, yo, was all that lit. If I had to do this again, I'd do it again. Jay, I look like you're about to say something. You know somebody that would say it. 
what? That's a who who what? Yeah, that, that. I don't know anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm not going to experiment and try it. But I will agree <laughs> with Quay and Joe and all of you guys in terms of it's a scenario where if you're not going to be able to deter somebody from doing it, then help them to protect themselves. I guess. I'm, I see both. Because I feel like if there was no Planned Parenthood, half the people that... Oh, I feel like if there was no Planned, Parent, Planned Parenthood, half the people that are like engaging wouldn't be because they wouldn't have a clutch. I, and, and again, like I said, I completely understand. I hear where you're coming from. But what about the people who... All right, because here's the deal. How old is Planned Parenthood? How, long, how many years have there been having Planned Parenthood? Honestly, I have no idea. Yeah, just a throw... That's just, how long have you known about it? I've known about it since, like, middle school. Okay. So, you're, you're 17. Mm-hmm. Middle school, how old were you? Like, 11. 11. So, let's say it came out 10 years prior to you. Mm-hmm. Right? So, it's been out since then. People were preg- getting pregnant as teenagers before then. True. People were getting diseases before then. Bear in mind, when things like those come out, they do not come out proactively. They come out retroactively. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when things come out, they come out because something happened that made it an issue and they brought it out. So if planned, I, and I, but I completely understand what you're talking about. Some people get reckless with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like the people who drive a little faster now because they're driving a bigger vehicle. You know what I'm saying? It's a scenario where... You know, you're, 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 you're taking th- certain things for granted because you know that there's some little help you can get around the corner. But where ignorance comes into play and borderline just straight up stupidity is what about the thing that Planned Parenthood can't help you with? There's no Planned AIDS hood, herpes hood. None of that now going around there. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then what happens is this. You go do all of that and catch the AIDS and the herpes and whatever the case may be. And the same homegirls know about it. Guess what? The first set of people who are this one, you now hang out with you no more because you the herpes chick. That's true. You the AIDS girl. That's true. I can honestly say that because there was a girl who I went to school with and that happened and like all of her friends disappeared. So it's, it's I, I, all I'm getting at pretty much is this. For those ears that are listening, I know it's played out. It's old school to use things like abstinence. But here's the deal. I remember when you two girls were like this big. I feel like yesterday. Now I close my eyes and you're this big. Guess what's gonna a yeah, little bigger. A little bigger. Yeah. But you're this you're <laughs> you're, you're almost headed <laughs> You're almost about to head out the door. Here's the truth. Time flies so fast. In a year or two, a year or two will fly by so fast you will be out there, you'll be mentally prepared for it all. So if you're at borderline eighteen years old right about now. What's the difference between now or chilling out for the next couple of months or a couple of years or whatever? Time flies so fast. Doesn't it feel to you girls like yesterday you were in middle school? Yeah. So it's the same thing that's going to happen. Time's going to fly and you're going to be there. For the guys, them turn with from the mic long time because them, you know, they're not too weird to think. But the truth is the same thing goes for you guys. The same thing goes for you guys. Because you have people out there who are looking. All right, you, for example, you're, you play soccer, right? Trying to get yourself a scholarship, right? Mm -hmm. College and all that stuff. You think an injury is the easiest way for you to blow all of that? No. No? No, a little baby is. A little bit of AIDS is. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) That that that. stuff will stop it in a heartbeat. Because here's the deal. You're a good guy. You're raised right. Right? So if somebody shows up tomorrow pregnant and it is yours, you're going to have to stop doing what you're doing to take care of that child because that's how you were raised. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a scenario where that little, and, and truth be told, at your age right now, nobody that you're with right about now is going to be your wife. It's just the reality of it. Nobody. High school sweetheart. Hi, it you ain't happening. your parents. Oh, yes, hmm? Weren't your parents together in like middle school? That's an anomaly. That's one. <laughs> and second thing pretty much is this. Like you always <clears throat> mentioned, totally different time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everybody in here, guys, first girlfriend, girls. First little boyfriend, wasn't he supposed to be forever? Prince Charming, all that? Oh, I'm still on my first boyfriend. <laughs> first of all, you shouldn't have no boyfriend, so we got to talk to your dad about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but, but the reality of it is this. In a couple months, 
in a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very abnormal. Uh, <laughs> it's like it sounds so abnormal for you. Exactly. That's stuff, that relationship lasts more than a week. Oh, what? Crazy? That must be some Florida stuff. You know, like you said, Florida. But <laughs> is it? Really <laughs> got it. Really got it. Is it in New York, I got, wow. Yeah, New York is a time limit. <laughs> no, you know, you know what it is. Not everybody's reckless. Regard, it's not everybody's reckless. Yeah, I'm I wasn't. Tr- I wasn't you know? allowed to date. So now that I, I am dating, you know. I, I don't want my dad meeting Joe, John, and, and Philip. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? True. So. True. That is very true. And, and the other thing pretty much is, a lot of times as people, as human beings, as teenagers, we don't look at anything as bigger than ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I remember growing up, I, I was no, I'm not saying I was a saint, but I made a concerted effort. I never wanted to let down my mom. I never wanted to let down my godmother. A lot of people now just don't care. They're just rolling through. Who it hurts, it hurts. But the crazy thing is, if somebody does something to your mother to make one tear fall from her eye, you're ready to fight. But you want to do something that will make her cry for the rest of her life. By her house. Hmm? By her house. That tears of joy, that would be great, right? But do you want her sitting on crying because you got the supercharged AIDS about to die? <laughs> supercharged, you. Had- <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going through a turbo kit on it. You got the LeBron AIDS, the big oh. 23 joint. <laughs> no, no, so that's what I'm saying. You don't want your mom to be to 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 to, to be devastated over that. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Or the kid comes and then two days later find out that. Can you imagine? You have a baby born tomorrow. Fall in love with the baby. Decide, okay, I'm gonna leave this job. I'm gonna, I'm, I mean, give up my football, my soccer scholarship, and I'm gonna take care of this baby. Find out that because of you and your recklessness, your baby got AIDS. Oh, oh. they're gonna say it's not mine. Hmm? They're gonna say it's not mine. That's the least of your problems. Yeah. It would be good if it wasn't yours because then maybe you ain't got the AIDS too, but it is yours. <laughs> so that means you got it. So but the, and guess what? Problem. You could not have it too. Sometimes that stuff does happen. Where you don't have it. But yeah, the truth is, your little baby boy just born, baby girl, and you're so attached. And when the results came back from certain shots, they call you in and they say, hey, Mr. Austin, guess what? Sorry to put it to you this way. But Junior, because that's your man. You named him after you. Firstborn. Son looks just like you. Right? He going to play soccer too. Or he was because he ain't living past Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? Wait, when the baby's born at age, it doesn't... He don't have no immune system. They yeah, they, they catch He's a baby. He don't have no immune system. Catch a cold and it's, that's it. Sometimes because sometimes if it's not full-blown, they can grow up with it, but they do. They can. They have like, especially, like, they can. Stuff. But the thing is this, because the reality of it is, that's a little baby. Not much immune system. Right? Yeah. To fight anything. You brought him in the world with AIDS. I did I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It could be the the other spouse. Yeah. It's still your choice. But he's still your choice. Are you right? You right? That's true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so how do you deal with that? I, at the, I'm just getting to the point that sometimes it's just cool to just wait a little bit. And guess what? If you're not gonna wait, safe up. Be safe. And the whole concept of old news. No player. You want to know. You know what I mean? Trust me. You want to know. No rentals, no nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Try to buy a new car. You know? I'm just saying. But anyways, it can be... See, it got a little daunting in here really quick. Mm-hmm. When you look at it from that standpoint. Yeah. The truth is that happens. It happens. And the statistics are... Some, I don't remember what the exact number is, but let's say for argument's sake, one in five... Are, are, are dealing with some form of STD. You know what that means? Five of us is in this room. One person. Don't look so nervous. It's not me, though. Don't, <laughs> look, so <laughs> it don't look so nervous. Trust me. And, it, and, it, and it's not real till it gets real. You know what I mean? It'll drop on your doorstep. All right, let's not let's not make it too much of a daunting subject because I'll, I, everybody going to go there calling people and girl you up. <laughs> we gotta talk we gotta talk so but here's the thing man let me ask you this and I'm, and I'm gonna start with you 
with everything that you're doing right now, I'm not saying every y'all seem to be good kids. All right. Um, what's the worst thing that could happen to you as a teenager right now that could have the most adverse effect on your future? Today, right now, what could happen to you right now that you think could be the worst effect on your future as you have it mapped out and planned in your head right now? Um, uh, I believe drug abuse. So that's the worst thing that could probably happen to you right now? Yeah. Do you take drugs? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> Do you want me to edit? <laughs> All right. Well, here's the thing about, and I ask for a particular reason. You say drug abuse. It always amazes me when somebody talks about drug abuse and they talk about overdosing. Like somebody wakes up tomorrow and becomes a, an, an addict or wakes up tomorrow and, and ODs. Whatever happened to day one, why did you start in the first place? Uh, stress. Stress? is a big part. Why, why you started? Like take things off your, your mind, you know, just to become more relaxed. Not to worry about too much things at that, that moment. Okay, then what happens the moment after the high passes and you got to go back to that? Because that's where the OD comes into place right yeah, now, right? Sure you, you take it to get over that little hump. But then once you get over the hump, the, hump, the thing, whatever the problem you're running away from is still there. Always. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, here's the deal. At 14, 15 years old, what can be that stressful that a 15-year-old would need drugs? Except... If you had some of that AIDS <laughs> or that baby mama. That's Bullying. Bullying will make you take drugs. Absolutely. Mm-mm. Explain yourself, Joe. I'm only saying this because in middle school, I knew a girl who did that. Like, she got bullied really, really badly. Mm-hmm. You still and... have to wake up every morning and get bullied? <laughs> yeah. No. So you make it. Yeah, that's my, que- that's my question. So now that you're high. <laughs> Does yeah. that mean you don't get bullied anymore? But it's not like a... Old no, you're a crackhead yeah. that's being bullied. But the thing is, she came to school high. Okay. So it didn't bother her. So it didn't bother much. her when she was in school. And then she, by the time she got home, she don't remember what nobody said to her. Yeah. Okay. Not that I'm justifying it. So then when she, she learned died, in school? She did. Oh, she died? She's, she died. But like that she was her reasoning out. for why she did it. All right. Well, here's... here's I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this right here. Because... I have two things that I'm trying to get through to with this. The people who, and let's specify, let's say for the bully part of it, right? Mm -hmm. The people who are being bullied to know that there's ways to get around it. There's help you can find. Don't hurt yourself. Don't seek drastic measures to get over it. Because truth be told, if you tell the right person, have the conversation and try to, you can solve it. Mm Mm-hmm. But to be perfectly honest with you, you know who I'm trying to reach out to? The bully. The bully. Because for that one person that took their lives intentionally or did something that cost them their life, do you, whomever you are, want that on your shoulder, on your conscience? Can you imagine having to wake up tomorrow to a note that said, I took my life. Because you, Javon. Whoa. Because you, Joey. Okay. All right, then. Bullied me. You think that's easy to live with? No. Not at all. Of course not. No. And then later on in life, as that's on your conscience and that bothers you and that wears at you and that eats at you, guess what you do to medicate the drugs, right? Mm -hmm. And then you could also be the next story of the overdose and so forth. All because you couldn't just be positive. Because I'm trying to figure out what is there to gain. In Jamaica, we said, don't be no who for frightened. Mm -hmm. If you come and bully, I I promise you this, if the bully shows up and starts the bullying, and before the bullying is complete, one right hand, boom, 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 you're on your back. I promise you they don't bully that person tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nip it in the bud right there. I'm not telling anybody to go fight. But I'm just saying. The other thing pretty much is this. You go to bully somebody. What if you just went to bully somebody who's going through a lot and is on their way to go commit suicide right now? This is getting real daunting. Right? This person's going through a lot. Decided I'm, 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 I'm done with all this bullying from, from somebody over there. Now they're going over here and you opt to bully them. 
And they're like, okay, well, I was going to go do this anyway, so let me just take you with me. You never know. You don't know what somebody else is dealing with. You don't know what somebody else is going through. You don't have to. You just don't. And I, I try to throw all of those scenarios in there because those are the scenarios that nobody thinks of. When people get killed, when people kill themselves, when people do all kinds of things, they don't always leave a manuscript behind or, or notes to say what it was and why it was. And we sit down and we cry over people sometimes and this person's, ah, I can't believe and so forth. When the truth is, they weren't that nice a person. They might probably were a bully and whatever the case may be. And I'm never going to say get what they deserved, but it wasn't as sweet as scenario as they try to paint. Room's real quiet. But that's just the truth. That is pretty much just the, just, just, just the truth. What do you guys know now that you didn't know in your freshman year? Quay, let's start with you. Come back. <laughs> um, that life is more serious than I take it. I'm a bubbly person. Mm -hmm. I laugh a lot of things off. You know, I don't. I procrastinate a lot. So I don't take stuff serious until like ball drop. But now I'm starting to prepare. Right. So now I have to take it a little more serious. Right. And is that why right now you are, like you said, working hard, doing the job, saving the money, college on the brain, doing the research, doing all that stuff? Mm-hmm. And with the field that I, I want to go into the Navy, I know I have to like, three, you know, not even a 360, 180. Right. Got to turn around and make myself prepared my, mentally and like physically. So the light bulb has gone off for you mm -hmm. that around the corner is your future, not mom's future, not dad's future. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. Joey, what do you know now that you didn't know freshman year? Um, I wouldn't say I didn't know. I would say like I chose to act like I didn't know. And that would be like that what. My actions fall back on me. Like, I'm the only person that can be responsible for what I do. And I feel like when I was younger, if somebody bothered me and I went and did something back to that person, then I would be like, well, they bothered me. But now it's like somebody throw water on me and I turn around and now I'm in a fight with this person. When it comes down to it, we're both getting charged with assault, but I'm, I'm in that cell by myself. I can't turn around and be like, oh, well, she bothered me. And that's going to you know, buy me my way out of jail. So I had to start accepting that there's not always an out to everything. Sometimes you just got to own up to what you did. Self-accountability. A hundred percent. Javon. I feel the same way. I feel when Joey said was right. Well, what you do does affect you in the long run. No one's going to feel sorry for you. No, I mean, well, people are going to feel sorry for you, but honestly, you're the only person that can change and, you know, make that difference within yourself. You have to see it within yourself and realize that this is my life and this is what, you know, I'm going to be living with for the rest of my life. I have to, you know, get serious and I have to do what I need to do. And because you've said a lot of things that I don't want to incriminate you, I'm not even going to call names, so let me know. What about you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to be honest because, you know, I'm only 15. In ninth grade, uh, I was only thinking about girls mm -hmm. and sneakers and clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, I realized females come and go. Right. Not to try too hard. Like, the less you try, the, the more that comes for some reason. Right. And But, but yeah, um, I understand what everybody else is saying. Right. But, yeah, so it, that's preparing me for when I get to that age and that greed. How to right. view things starting from now. I like it. I like it. And, I, and here's the deal. Your answers are different because you're at different places in your life and it's supposed to be that way. There's nothing I dislike like when somebody tries to get a 15-year-old to act, think, and sound like a 17-year-old. You're 15. You wise up. You see things. You grow. You're going to do a lot better than you did when you were 14. But I don't expect your outlook to be that of the two 17-year-olds. You know what I'm saying? So the good thing, though, is 
learn. They used to say that a wise person doesn't learn from their mistakes, but the mistakes of others. You know what I'm saying? The best person to teach you how to do the job is the one that's done it before you. So reach out to the person who's been there before. Find out how they navigated their way around it and see if you can get help there. And ladies, I love what you guys said. You know, your outlook is what it is because, yes, around the corner for you is reality. College. Going out on your own. Providing for yourself. Parents will, you know, will be here, but you're going out there to start your life. And if you don't go out there right, it's going to be tough. You know what I mean? So the other thing I'd, 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 I'd want to know pretty much is because everybody in here, I'm going to assume, loves their parents. Mm -hmm. I've said earlier in passing, why would you do something that would cause your parent or so forth to hurt? Because the truth is, you don't want them hurt, right? Mm -hmm. But you're going to do something. Imagine me having to live. If something happens to Joey tomorrow, I'm going to be hurting for the rest of my life. Is that cool? I mean, no. We, we, don't, and we don't intentionally go out and do stuff thinking that, oh, yeah, this is going to end up hurting him, so why, why not do it? We do it because, I mean, that's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't go out thinking, yeah, this is, you know, this is, this is my main goal. And I'm going to go hurt them. Like, I want to disappoint them. Right. We don't go out thinking like that. We, well, we want to experience some things for ourselves. I hear you. And I can't knock that. The thing is, though, key word is you said, you're not thinking. You're not thinking. And here's the deal. It's no different from you not being able to get some sneakers, you not being able to get clothes to go back to school, because your parent wasn't thinking about the fact that you might need that. So they spent the money on a new whip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's always some thinking to be done. Always some thinking to be done. I get what you're saying. It's not your intent to go out there and cause havoc. But again, I have always been conscious of not living your life on, 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 on eggshells and so forth. But things can happen. And when you're gone, you're gone. In the blink of an eye, it's over for you. The issue is not you. The issue is those, those that are going to hurt for what's happened to you. Well, like, in our defense, um, it takes a lot of maturity to, like, consider the consequences. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's something that you develop as you get older. Unfortunately, I would have to say that our generation is pretty immature. But at the same time, it is dawning on some of, some of us. Because even me, like, in all honesty, it took me a full 17 years to come to terms with the fact that I have to be responsible for my own actions versus somebody else who just born knowing that, like, you just have it in you versus, I don't know, for some reason, I always felt like I always had something I could lean back on until now starting to realize that it really is just me. So certain conversations that you have with yourself in your own head, you're not going to have until you reach a certain point in your life. And gotcha. I feel like that is one of those conversations. I got you, I got you. And you ladies had said something before, you in particular also, which again is growth. And I had a, prior to this conversation, I did a, an interview for the podcast that's coming up with an attorney, um, criminal and juvenile justice. So that's something that might be interesting for you guys to listen to. But what you mentioned is real in terms of what used to be a slap on the wrist could be jail tomorrow. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Could be serious stuff tomorrow. Perfect example, and again, she mentioned it in that one. You're 15 years old, right? Yeah. Your girlfriend, let me, let me, I'm four years older than my wife, right? Mm -hmm. Grown woman, four years younger than me, right? Yeah. You, at 15 years old, have a girlfriend that's only two years younger than you. She's 13. Is that cool? What's the age limit? Oh, I go older. You like older? <laughs> no yeah. way. Okay. But let's say you went older, 
right? Let's say my you age, were my age older. Your age or older? Like, like a year younger. Okay, a year younger. Yeah. You know, depending on where you are, realistically speaking, That's you can go right. to jail. For that, if you're 14 and she's 13 and the age of consent is 13 in that state, like Wisconsin, like we're talking to her, mm. right? That's just your girlfriend. You're not raping anybody. Yeah. That's your girlfriend. And her parents decide, you know what? I don't want my daughter hanging out with whomever, blah, 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 blah. Cops. Jail. Five years. Not, on, not, not only five years. 15 years. That's a minimum. Oh, hell yeah. That's 20 Five years. No, no, no. But here's the deal. We're talking about five years. And then you are a sex offender for life. So that's like no Now, gosh. you don't get to explain to everybody that, hey, man, I was 15, my girl was 14. And it's just based on breach of law that that stuff happened. Nobody's asking you all that. They just see in the sex offender registry. Mm-hmm. It's like hard for jobs and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And people in your, in your, in your apartment complex. Right now, I can pull up on my that. phone all the sex, sex offenders offender. that's registered around. Mm-hmm. You also here's what life's difficult for you right now. You've decided, okay, I'm bounced back. I'm gonna do what I need to do. I want to go live over there. Oops, can't live over there. Too close to the school. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I'm gonna go that direction because it's nice over there. Oops, can't go over there because guess what? Pretty, pretty good. Mm-hmm. They, they 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 just don't allow for sex offenders. There are certain places that they'll just let you know you can't can't live over here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Trying to get a job. But the job that pays some good money has you doing some work in the vicinity of a school. Can't do that. So forever, based on just you being a kid. And I said that because at some point in time, just being a kid and not thinking can cost you. Here's how it costs some people too. Girl or boy or whatever the case may be. Genuinely likes, not trying to be a hoe. Genuinely likes somebody. And a situation like that happens. Now you've just ruined somebody's life. Or they've just ruined their own life. However you want to spin it. I'm just saying to you that a lot of times when you're at a certain young age, you have this luxury of not thinking. I'm not telling you to research the laws and stuff. It's just that things can happen. Things can happen. So think about some of the things that you do. Think about some of the things that you say. It can go left real quick. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, just think on these things. Yeah. All right? Keep it moving. Keep it grooving. It's homegrown. You think I need to be the headset, my mommy, papa. My mommy, papa. She said, put down that DJ thing there. I just your book, my one, your tech up, tech up, tech up. Because every day you just a make dear nice more while my one, you shut up. You feel like no producer boy can carry you a student go lock up Now she's my biggest fan Love you my number one Words of a queen That's everything what my mama said to me She's still my biggest fan Go see your face when you hear this ya Words of a queen That's everything what my mama said to me She ain't gon' beat me yet yeah. That couldn't keep me wet But come I done did have to dry eye yeah. One day in a my room my death I sing a tune for a nice piece of beat me set My neighbor them a tell me how my song sweet Mama walk in and hear it Says she need a one day on her playlist Now she's my biggest fan Love you my number one Words of a queen That's everything we feel my mama said to me All right, guys, I'll edit that part out, Joey, because I'm sure you don't want her to hear that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so <laughs> needless to say. All right. Listen, I want to, first of all, thank you all for your openness and your honesty. Um, don't worry, your parents won't judge you. And here's the deal. I made this two hours because when they look and see it's two hours long, they definitely ain't going to listen. So don't so don't don't worry about it. My dad will. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he my sure will. will. Yeah, my, my dad. dad will too. My, dad, <laughs> my dad, will. dad will too. So I ain't say nothing bad. I watch, I watch everything I said. No, and and you know what? It's not about saying anything bad or not saying anything bad because whether if you don't say it and it's happening, then what's the difference? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why. Because here's the thing too. 
you are going to go back and listen to this later on. And if there's something that you are saying and you're doing, you'll catch it. That's true. And you'll be like, man, maybe not. But believe me when I say next year when you're Javon's age, there's a lot of things you're doing right now that you won't be thinking of doing. When you get to the girl's age, it's the same thing. I always make, I always trouble Joey and I said, Joe, your time will come. <laughs> your time will come. You're saying, I do this, I'm miserable, I get at you, I do this and that. When you have your own kids, it's going to be that way. Hog ox and mama. Uh, exactly. And you always let them say, I'm going to talk like my granny. Hog ox and mama, I'm so long. Yeah, girl. You always see. All right? So, it, it, your time will come. And I'm going to take your children, I'm going to Red Bull them up, I'm going to jack them up, and I'm going to bring them back to you. Everything that you did to me, coming back tenfold. I'm going to have fun with it. But anyways... Um, hope you guys had a good time. Anything that you want to say before you get out of here? No. No? Nope. Think you said no? Yeah. Jay? No, I'm good. Joe? Mm-mm. Quay? No. No? <laughs> oh, boy. You don't uh, spoke too much. <laughs> <laughs> Under normal circumstances, I say, drop your social media information so that the people can get in contact with you, but not you for it. No, I'm good. No. I'm not getting in contact Why? with me. Huh? Why? You want to drop your social media info? No. <laughs> I, mean, I just thought it was restrictions on something. I'm but anonymous. No. Yeah. Because you haven't said my name, so I'm anonymous. You're anonymous? Yeah, because you haven't said my name. I haven't. You, should I? No. Keep it on my own. Keep it on the low? End it all for him. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And um, look forward to resuming this another day. We'll do part two, all right? All right. All right, take it easy. Keep it moving, keep it grooving. It's homegrown. Yeah, I'm a no one from a child. I'm a future children. My nieces, nephews, I'm a godchildren. Now all the youths out there, G-Quil, cool, send that one out for them. Joey, Justin, Melee, Marlea, Gavi, Christian, Caden. Yeah, man. Baby, you can always do home. I'm never too far You can always come home My love will follow you wherever you You can always come home I'm never too far And there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. It has indeed been a pleasure. Remember, be safe, be kind, and be good to each other. My name is G. Cole, and this is Homegrown. Nakikinika sa musica. Homegrown with G. Cole. Estás escuchando Homegrown con G. Cole. 您现在正在收听的是 Homegrown with G. Cole. You're listening to Homegrown with G. Cole. Remember, all the music played here on the Homegrown podcast is available on iTunes, Spotify, and all your digital retailers. Please support the artists.